In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of microscope that you need to know about in A-level biology for studying cells. So we're going to look at the optical or the light microscope, the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope and use it as an opportunity to talk about pros and cons and also some of the key definitions like magnification and resolution. So let's get started. Firstly, the light microscope. Now, this is the one that you use in school or college. You'll see it in the exam called an optical microscope. And you do these at GCSE and you've used them quite a few times by now. So you should know how they work. Um, but let's go through the pros and cons of using them because this is usually what comes up in the exam. You kind of have to compare the different um, uses and advantages, disadvantages of the different types. So in terms of a light microscope, one of the main advantages is you can see colour. And this is because the microscope uses light, okay? So you have all those kind of visible colours of light that you can then see when you're looking at your specimen. So you can see colour images. Another advantage is you can look at living specimens. And this is because you don't have to place them in a vacuum. You simply place them on your slide, um, usually with a little bit of water, which is what we call a wet mount or a temporary mount. You put your cover slip over the top. You don't even have to use a cover slip, um, but you can look at living specimens. You're not gonna be putting them into a vacuum like you are with an electron microscope. Um, now, yes, they're cheaper. Yes, they're smaller. Yes, they're more portable. Yes, they're easier to use, but these are often not credited on biology A-level mark schemes. So the best advantages to go for are that you can see in color and you can look at living specimens. Now, disadvantages. Optical microscopes have a lower magnification and a lower resolution than electron microscopes. Now remember, magnification is how many times larger the image is compared to the actual size or the real size of the specimen. So when we talk about magnification, we don't use a unit you might put a time symbol in front of it to show how many times bigger the specimen has been made compared to the real size of the specimen. But that's what magnification means. We're not going to use the word zoomed in because that's not going to get us credit. Resolution is the microscope's ability to distinguish between whoop, two separate objects or two separate points. Now, light microscopes have a low resolution. And what this means is that if objects are quite close together, for example, ribosomes are quite close together, the microscope is not going to be able to differentiate between those two ribosomes. It's not going to be able to distinguish between the two separate points. So it will appear as one image under the microscope. So the clarity of the image will be lower. The amount of detail that you see will be lower. But this is because it has a lower resolution. And the reason it has a lower resolution is that light has a longer wavelength than electrons. So the wavelength of light is too long to be able to distinguish between two separate objects that are very close together. Electron microscopes have a much higher resolution. We'll talk about the wavelength of electrons in a second, but obviously it's shorter than the wavelength of light. Other disadvantages when using a light microscope. And um, I suppose linked to these two statements that we've already got, you cannot see smaller organelles. And you can give examples, so e.g. vesicles, ribosomes. Be careful, don't say the nucleus because you can see the nucleus with an optical microscope. Don't even say mitochondria because with some of the best light microscopes, the ones with the highest magnification possible, you can see the mitochondria just about. Um, so go for the smallest organelles that you know you definitely cannot see with a light microscope. 
You can also say you cannot see details of organelles. So for example, if you're thinking about the nucleus, you can see the nucleus, but you cannot see the nucleolus or you cannot see the nuclear membrane. Okay, so whereas with an electron microscope, you would be able to because it has a higher magnification and a higher resolution. Now, obviously it gives a 2D image, but I'm not gonna give that as a disadvantage because so does a transmission electron microscope. So try and stick to disadvantages that are purely for the optical microscope, okay? Right, let's think about a transmission electron microscope. Now, as the name suggests, this microscope uses electrons so it uses a beam of electrons and it's focused using magnets. Now you don't really have to know any more than that in terms of how it works, but you are expected to know that it uses electrons and that they are focused by magnets, whereas the optical microscope uses light and it is focused by lenses. Forgot to mention that on the previous slide, but that could come up in the exam, but nothing more really about how these electron microscopes actually function. Now, what are the advantages of using a transmission electron microscope? Well, obviously it has a much higher magnification. So the image seen will be many, many more times bigger than the original specimen. But most of the exam questions focus on the fact that it has a higher resolution and this is because it uses electrons and electrons have a much shorter wavelength than light now this means that two objects or two organelles can be really really close together and you will still be able to see them as separate objects so you're going to get an image that is much more detailed and has much more clarity by the way, you don't have to know the actual resolutions of these microscopes. You're not expected to learn the numbers for magnification or resolution anymore. You just need to know that the transmission electron microscope has a much higher magnification, a much higher resolution. In fact, it's the highest of all the microscopes. Even when you compare this to a scanning electron microscope, this one is the best. Other advantages, well, linked to these, you can see smaller organelles. And I'm gonna give the same examples. So you can see ribosomes, you can see vesicles, you can see lysosomes, and you can see detail of these organelles. So going back to the nucleus as an example, you can see the nuclear membrane which is that double membrane, and you can see the nucleolus. You can even see the cristae inside, inside the mitochondria. You can see the thylakoid discs, the grana inside the chloroplasts. And this is really, really specific for the transmission electron microscope because with a transmission electron microscope, the electrons do pass through the specimen. So you are looking at the inside details of the cell, you're looking at the subcellular structures or the organelles you're seeing inside the cell because the electrons are passing through. Now, in terms of disadvantages, you can only look at dead specimens. And this is because the specimen is placed in a vacuum. Because remember, you're using electrons which need the vacuum in order to pass through that specimen. So you can only look at dead specimens. It only gives black and white images. But so does a scanning electron microscope. That will also only give black and white images. And you do have to be a bit careful using this as a disadvantage in your exam because most of the images in your exam paper are likely to be in black and white. In fact, for AQA, usually the whole paper is in black and white. So I wouldn't go for that as a disadvantage, to be honest, but we should know that it does only produce black and white images compared to a light microscope, which can give images we can see in colour. Other disadvantages, you do need very thin specimens. 
Now I've underlined the word very, because even with a light microscope, you do need thin specimens so the light can pass through and you can see the individual cells and the organelles. But here we need very thin specimens because the electrons need to pass through. So it can be very difficult to prepare specimens that are thin enough. And in fact, that leads me to my next disadvantage. There's a very complex or time consuming preparation process. And one of the reasons for that is because the specimens do have to be so super thin, but also because there's a complex staining process that is needed when using an electron microscope. You're also more likely to get artifacts. Now an artifact is anything that shouldn't really be there. It's not part of the specimen that you're trying to observe. So it might be a fingerprint or an air bubble or some dirt or some dust. And you are more likely to get these artifacts with the transmission electron microscope because the preparation process is so time consuming and so complex that it's likely that some of these artifacts will be present in the final specimen that you are observing. Okay, so there are key disadvantages. Now let's just go ahead and compare a transmission electron microscope to a scanning electron microscope. So the image on the left would be taken with a transmission electron microscope or a TEM. And I know this because it's 2D. I'm not going to say it's black and white because both types of electron microscopes give black and white images. But the, the thing that makes it obvious is this one is 2D and this one is 3D. So this one is obviously taken with a scanning electron microscope or an SEM. The scanning electron microscope, it does use electrons. It's still an electron microscope, but the electrons bounce off the surface of the specimen. So we get a 3D image as opposed to a 2D image. The other difference between them and the reason I know which is which is with this image here, I can see inside the cell. So I can see organelles and really small organelles like ribosomes and vesicles because it's a transmission electron microscope with a very high resolution but I'm clearly seeing inside the cell. So I can see organelles. I can see detail of organelles. So I'm clearly looking inside the cell, which tells me the electrons have been transmitted through the specimen. Therefore, I was using a TEM and I got a 2D image of the inside of the cell and the organelles within the cell. Whereas here, I can see the surface detail only. And if you look at this image, I'm looking at the surface of what looks like cells or pollen grains. I've got a 3D image of the surface, but because the electrons have bounced off the surface, I'm not looking within the cell. I can't see organelles and I cannot see details of those organelles. So I know that's a scanning electron microscope, still has a very high magnification, still has a very high resolution, although not quite as high as the transmission electron microscope. But this time it's 3D and it's surface detail only. They're both black and white, so I'm going to avoid that in my answer. But hopefully it's quite easy to tell the difference. If you think it looks 3D in your exam paper, you're going to go for scanning electron microscope. If it's 2D, but you can see very high resolution, lots of clarity and detail, it's going to be the transmission electron microscope. I hope you found this video useful. Have a look back through past paper questions where this kind of topic has come up. It's usually a kind of compare, give the pros, give the cons, the limitations, compare the types of microscope. Or you might see lots of questions where they give you an image, like on the screen here, and they ask you which type of microscope has been used and how do you know.